hello guys so in this video we are going to cover the atomicity in java so let's first try to understand what is the need of these this thing let's see let's say whenever you write something like this let's say for example int i plus plus let's say you have defined this variable called this and you say i plus plus so this operation is a composite operation what do you mean by that this does not involve only single operation this involves multiple operation one thing is what reading before incrementing any value you need to read the current value then only you can increment it so first operation is the read then another operation is the update okay or increment you can say like adding the uh, adding the plus one to the value or addition and the third operation is going to be what writing the value back to the variable right now let's see what happens let's say there are multiple threads right now there are threads t1 and t2 okay now t1 thread was trying to update the value of this i basically by basically this uh, it was running this uh, operation i plus plus so first t1 will read the value of i so t1 got to know that hey, the value of i is zero in between that context switching happen we have already covered about this part in the in one of the video in our course so you can just go through it if the context switch in ha switching happen at this point of time what will happen t1 knows that hey t1 has already done the read operation so he knows the current value of the that i now in that way context switching happened so instead of t1 now the t2 is running in the cpu now t2 again will read the same value which is zero and let's say before context switching happen again it was it, it it read the value it updated the value and it wrote the value also so the new updated value which was done by the t2 became one now t1 also tried to do the same thing but t1 will not up, uh, read the value again now t1 have already read the value uh, which is zero so now again it will set the value of i to one but the expected result which we were expecting from this code was going to be at the end that hey i should be equivalent to 2 not 1 so this is the this is the issue which we see when we are doing these incremental operations which are not atomic by the nature when we say atomic they are not done in one go basically there are multiple steps which needs to be done to complete the transaction and we are not doing any kind of locking in 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 between that so if context switching happen in between the way it happened in t1 and t2 there will be the issues basically the expected value at the end was uh we were looking to have which is i equivalent to 2 but as we see the, because of the context switching the final value after both of the thread are done with the updating the value is going to be i equivalent to 1 which is not what we are looking for now let's come back to this example okay so one of the way to fix this is by using this synchronized word like we can have the synchronization on the particular operation and in this way we can make sure that the increment that the increment operation is happening in the synchronized way basically we are going to lock the value and if even other th try to enter into this function it will not be allowed to do that that is one of the way. other way which for which we are actually looking for is the atomic variables these are the inbuilt packages this is one of the inbuilt packages provided in the java they are atomic by the nature basically so instead of defining the variable like this way private int count equivalent to zero we can define any integer in this way and this is by nature inbuilt synchronized basically so if you are going to increment any of the value here it will be safe from the multi-threading issues the, the issues which we have seen here t1 and t2 so this is what the need of this atomic uh, basically the atomic operations in java it is not just for the atomic integer it is going to be it is for the atomic boolean also atomic long long also and all the other data structures also okay so here let's see one more example uh, the same example which we have just covered it here let's say the code is written in this way so if you see we have two threads t1 and t2 in inside that we are providing a runnable interface or we are providing uh, some instructions which needs to be executed by that thread for t1 it is this one for t2 it is this one now 
we started t1 and we started t2 if you see in this code we are going to face the issues why as you can see there are no locking there are no we are not using atomic variable so at the end the expected value of these variables the discount is may not be uh, may not be exactly same basically yeah so if you see here we have something we have defined this class which is public uh, class non-atomic example and inside that we are having a variable called count okay so this is a simple variable which we have defined don't just uh, got confused with the naming it is a simple variable which we are calling we are calling this operation called example dot increment which is which means we are calling this operation as we can see this is not synchronized this is not thread safe in any way we are not using atomic variables on the count so the output of this operation is not going to be what we are actually looking for so and to fix these kind of things either we can use synchronized block or we can have an atomic variable okay as we can see there are multiple classes for integers also there is a long also there are four references also like you will get to know that this using this atomic reference will be great for the for multiple purposes uh, we are going to discuss more about the other kind of references like weak references is atomic references later on but just for the atomicity i think this is enough just to cover like what do you mean by atomicity and why it is required basically